Today we're talking about the Minolta Maximum 7000. And stick around to the end because I'm going to reveal my top three lenses that are under $100 for this camera. Calvin, can we watch it? Quick pros and cons of this camera. Pros, half press autofocus, auto exposure, auto film load, auto film advance, auto film rewind, reads DX codes, takes four AA or AAA batteries, depending on which one you have, top shutter speed of one two thousandth a second, a tantalizing shutter sound. And lens options that make this camera system uniquely cheap. The cons, this camera has two bummers. The first bummer is that the autofocus is booty by today's standards. If you're used to shooting on a mirrorless camera or even a DSLR, this autofocus is gonna be behind that for sure. And the auto rewind takes forever. A little side note, not necessarily a bummer, but it can only shoot up to two frames per second in continuous mode. This beautifully retro, futuristic, fully automatic 35mm film SLR came out in 1985. Boasting about its autofocus features, this camera kicked off the autofocus wave of the early 1990s. What was different about this camera's autofocus is that the autofocus was in the body. This allowed the lens options to be made for a cheaper price while retaining their image quality. So this camera is typically priced anywhere from $25 to $40 on average because of their age. They're usually pretty well used. At the same time, uh, you can find some as expensive as $125 if it's in great condition. Still, for what this camera is and what it can do, it can be an absolute banger for your buck. High key. In 2006, Konica Minolta was bought out by Sony, and Sony effectively turned all of the Minolta alpha mount into the Sony alpha mount cameras and lenses. So all of your Minolta A mount and Sony A mount cameras and lenses are backwards and forwards compatible. So my top three lenses for this camera that are under $100. First up on the list, we have the 50mm 1.7, classic. Then you gotta go with the 70 to 210 f4 beer can lens, called the beer can because of its shape. And last but not least, the 28 to 85 macro. For having a floating aperture, this lens is actually capable of making some pretty banger images. This B roll that you're looking at right now was shot on it. Guys, I can't say enough great things about these cameras. As a matter of fact, I love these cameras so much that I went ahead and bought myself two of them. They're so cheap, I mean, why not? Just in case one falls apart, you know what I mean? Or I lose one or I drop one or whatever. I don't know, just having two makes me sleep better at night. Also, side note, I wanna talk about a very specific lens that's made for this camera. The Minolta 16mm f2.8 fisheye lens i'm gonna make a whole separate video on this lens but just know that this lens is so sick that i went ahead and bought me two of those as well because you know one for digital one for film you know what i'm saying you know, i appreciate you family for watching the video like the button subscribe the button do whatever you do with them buttons and have a wonderful evening love you calvin can we watch it